Hi and welcome back to another episode of All the Cards on the Table. This week we are going to take a look at the breakup. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hello everyone, you're listening to All Cards on the Table podcast with Claire and Sylvia, a show that talks about how men and women aren't so different from each other. We just don't speak the same language. We will dissect every topic and put an end to miscommunication. So get ready to get uncomfortable. Hi and welcome back. Claire Atio here. Hi everyone, this is Silvia Yehaida. And this week we're looking at breakup. This week we are going to... Oh, nobody likes this one when it comes to relationships, do they? No. It's like the song says, breaking up is hard to do, right? And <laughs> <laughs> it has, for me, it has a lot to do with the... It's, uh, it's often it's a lot more to do with the loss of dreams rather than the loss of the person. Yeah. Or an idea of, or belief, like you said, yeah. You invest believing that there's a future and, um, when it doesn't work out, you know, that leaves us feeling empty and lost a little bit. But um, I think we have to also think about when we first had our first breakup, like I was just telling you <laughs> earlier, like, oh, I dread the day that my daughter comes home and crying over a boy because it just broke up or, and you said, like, just let her be because it might but get back together to the next day. So just you know, for a shoulder to cry on. And that's true. But, you know, nowadays it's like everything's out, out there. And I've told my daughter as well. It's like, hey, just always keep your your personal feelings private, like in a sense of like, don't put them in social media. I mean, I'm not saying like hide them, don't talk about it. Of course, do you find, find your best friend, find, confine in me, confine in someone. Of course, talk about your emotions, but I feel like there's just so much of that now out in social media. I like, see it all the time. Well, I think we've got that scenario that I know you you've seen and I've seen it where you there's a group of young people and they're all sat at the table and they text each other rather than talk to each other. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And and I've, you know this is really dangerous ground because. On a site, this is causing a lot of psychological problems. It's creating psychological or a dysfunctional, dysfunctional psychological foundations moving into, you know, into that adulthood. So mm -hmm. what what your kids are doing now is what they will be doing as adults. And we're actually already starting to see that. We've both mm -hmm. both Sylvie and I have, have viewed a, a, a couple of videos over the this past week where there have been very They've obviously been very traumatic breakups, but it's been put out there on social media because they they need to express what they're feeling. But maybe I'm old fashioned, but is social media? I don't believe social media is the best place to do it. One, you're projecting all that negative energy and you're just kind of spilling it out over mm -hmm. everybody. And two, it, it really highlights the lack of inner circle friendships that that we're we're developing or not developing in this case. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. and and that I mean there's there's so much evidence out there that proves that if you have a good circle a good foundation if you have a team of people around you to support you and champion you through life then you're going to succeed you are going to you are going to overcome every single hurdle in a very positive way mm -hmm. 
I think that's because um, not a lot of people are connected nowadays. And so they don't have their little tribe or their little village. So they feel like the only way is to put it out there. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's trending right now where we talk about our feelings and you have this massive crowd like, oh, I'm so sorry you're feeling this way. So, you know, those types of posts to me always feel so attention seeking, like very almost narcissistic in a way. And so every time I see one, I just scroll up. I was like, okay, I don't, I don't want that energy. I feel bad. Don't get me wrong. I, I, we've all been there. We sympathize with them. With them. But I always say, is, was that really necessary? It's not that we don't care. We do. And especially if that is your only form to get help because you can't find someone to help you and you found help that way, great. Mm -hmm. But that's a very rare very rare occasions where that's actually true most of the time it's for attention and you're not going to heal that way I feel like you're actually just going to open yourself to more attacks mm -hmm. you're going to open yourself to not the attention you were looking for almost 90 percent of the time you if if you happen to find someone that's like oh this person's really hurting let me help them out nowadays we are we're being conditioned to see that as normal. So we don't react instead mm. of saying like, oh, my, this person really needs help, which is like, oh, another one. And you just scroll up. So now we invalidate how they're feeling, even if that was very real and they're really feeling and like it's that. dangerous. That's dangerous. And so like now validation we're, is dangerous. Exactly. So I feel like the more we normalize this trend of crying in front of camera and putting in social media for attention, it's not helping anyone. And that you're not getting the help that you need. You're getting the likes. You're getting the attention. That's not going to help you. That's not going to help you heal your heart. It's not going to help you move forward. You're not. You're going to find yourself stuck there. It's well. It's and, not good. It, do you know what I see? It. Excuse me, interrupting you. In in that in that kind of scenario, yes. Were those emotions real for you in that moment? Yes, they were. Were they? <laughs> In, in in the two videos I watched and both I could identify with both of them I could identify with what with how they were feeling I'm not I couldn't identify with all that was being said but I could certainly identify with how they were feeling in that moment mm -hmm. um and I don't I don't think any woman who who what would watch either of those wouldn't find something to identify in in yeah because it's it is commonplace um I think the problem is is when it's on social media the ego takes over and I think that's where you're coming from when you say narcissistic you're not calling anybody a narcissist or but no 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 it's, no. it's that the ego takes over because you get the likes you get people empathizing with you and so that boosts your energy up but the problem is is your only your energy is only boosted from an exterior perspective you're not doing the introspection you're not doing the inner learning to stop that situation happening in the future and you're also not doing that inner healing so that you can boost your own energy so you have sustainability and longevity and I think this is where we when we talk about this and this is where we're the the angle that we're coming from is for people to realize that they they those times alone, those private time, what used to be private times, yeah. <laughs> what used to be private times, were they lonely? Were they sad? Were they painful? Absolutely. But they were, they gave you the space, especially if you had loving people that just didn't give their opinions and just held the space for you, you know, a, a, an embrace, a hug, a, a stroke of the hair, somebody wiping your tears without saying a word. They give you the time to one, release all those motions. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the space to start doing the introspection so that you can go, okay, that part of the relationship breakup is mine. That was theirs. What can I learn from that? How could I prevent that from happening in the future? It's, you know, learning to see the red flags. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely true. Um, when you were saying all of that as well, I was thinking, I I, I feel like maybe because it's both of these uh, videos, the girls were very young or seem very young. Um, and again, I'm not saying that they're narcissistic people. I'm just saying that was a, a, a narcissistic move to do because that's where we're being trained. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's, you know, those were before private moments and we've all had a good cry. It, like, like you said, and, but one thing that kept coming for me, it was the fact that we haven't actually been taught or we stopped teaching how to deal with that privately Mm -hmm. we haven't really talked enough about what happens after a breakup or what happens after a relationship ends what's going to happen and if you have kids you know uh usually you will sit down it's like hey you know one day you're gonna have someone you're gonna love and very few people married or stay with that same person you fell in love with when you're a teenager and so on and so forth. So those, we need to teach how to deal with those emotions Mm -hmm. because they're valid emotions. And like you said, we felt for them both. Normally, like I scroll up this two videos, I listen to them because I can feel their pain. Like you said, we've all been there. I can feel it. I personally, and I think the majority wouldn't put it out there, Mm -hmm. but because that's very private and we've all had that. But let's, the reason I want to talk about it is because if she felt the need to bring it out to public, that tells me that she's not, I feel like she's, she wasn't prepared for it. She wasn't no, prepared for it and she didn't have a circle to help her with it. She didn't have her, her tribe. She didn't feel, she felt the need to share this It wasn't because it didn't come out like, hey, everyone, I just want to share this for awareness that you're not alone. We've all been through this. She shared it in her most vulnerable state of being, completely open and raw. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if things have changed nowadays because, you know, back when we were growing up, it was like even to cry in front of someone was something that you you did that privately. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all done like, um, I think you mentioned it the whole Bridget Jones's diary you were, were talking about yeah. earlier that you mentioned that scene and we're like yes we've all been there we've yes. all done that whole cry alone by ourselves in singing a room, drinking or wine room, drinking <laughs> wine of course Celine Dion in the background or nowadays is what uh, Adele <laughs> you know? we've all been there but it's but it's private because it's ours and mm-hmm. it's you know but when you cry it out it's a sense of self-healing as well and it's yours so you get to go through all the emotions Mm -hmm. and then once you're done crying you come down you realize what's happening and you just get that extra energy to come up and face the world yeah at least for most of us I think for me it's bringing a balance because of old I mean I when I was a kid my mother used to call this my mother (laughs) <laughs> she, I'm not nothing. My mother was a fantastic mother, but there were some things that like, <laughs> um, but she used to say, "Oh, stop that crying, or I'll give you something to cry for." Um, yeah, and that was very, that was very much a, a common theme. To a show of emotion was very much a, a a negative aspect of society. I don't want to go back to that. But I think we need no, to no, kind no. of bring it down a little bit. And we need to. Do we need to be emotionally available to each other? Yes. But do we need to be spilling our guts out globally to people Except. we don't even know who don't even care for us? Mm hmm. Exactly. And so that's, and like you said, that's just for your own ego, because you are going to get those likes, you are going to be followed, get all these followings, you are going to have people who will be like, I'm really sorry, I went through the same thing. And very, very small percentage actually find someone that can help them go through that breakup. But the vast majority, you're just opening up to a whole entire people that will just love the fact that you're hurting Mm -hmm. this bad energy 
the trolls, you're going to be subjected to being put more down, if anything, more attacked. Instead of being helped, you're going, people are going to attack you on that sense. So you can't, maybe at the time, because when we're going through that emotional stage, we really don't think. We're, we're very in the dark. Our decisions are not fully thought through. So maybe at that moment, you felt that was what you needed, which tells me you didn't have someone that you can call and, and feel this and talk to someone privately about this because you don't have that community, that village, the best friend or mother or sister or even brothers to express this pain that you're going through. So you felt you needed to put it out there for the rest of the world to see. And that was what's concerning for me is that you don't have someone to do that mm -hmm. because we have become so disconnected from each other. We have become, it's all about me and how I feel. Who cares what you feel, what you're going through? Who cares about the neighbor or your friend and they're going through a breakup? We have stopped being there for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we have not checked up on each other. Like, hey, how are you? Because I've, if I have, if she felt that need for that, it's because she felt alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she had to put it out there to get something out of it. Uh, so I believe she was in a, in a, you know, a deep, deep pain and her judgment wasn't cleared, but we do have the other ones who cry on camera just for attention. Yeah. And so that's what I'm saying that there, people are doing that and your pain, your, what you're feeling gets lost with all of the others because now, oh, here's somebody else crying or here's somebody else doing, but because that's what become, we become so desensitized from each other's pain and emotions we don't value that anymore well one i think we've, we've become desensitized to each other's pain and emotions and i t and two i think the the biggest problem is is we're not taught how to i i hate to say it but we've got such a nanny society globally that pain is viewed as a bad thing but pain i hate to say it, you fall off your bike you scratch your knee it hurts does mm -hmm. that stop you getting on the bike again? Do you kick and lambaste and, and swear and curse at the bike? No, you don't. It, 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 and I think this is, this is the biggest issue in society at the moment and the biggest issue in psychology at the moment <laughs> is this absolute inability to embrace pain, to embrace mm -hmm. negativity. Should we be staying in negative? I, get, I, I mean, I hate this. I'm the first person. I've always look on the bright side. I've, I've got a sunny personality. It don't matter what's going on in my life. I, I get up in the morning and think, right, okay, what is the day going to bring? Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are days that 10 minutes later, I might think, I want to get back under those covers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, so uh, positivity keeping ourselves positive is, is is a really good thing but but there is such a thing as toxic toxic positive positivity it's and this is what we need to be aware of because if we are using positivity to be deceitful with ourselves that is going to create toxicity in every aspect of our life if we and and this is where social media has a massive play in this because it because we've all seen it and let's be honest this we all we all kind of think oh god yeah no i can't post that photograph i look dreadful i look i mean we've all done, we've all done it yeah um but of course with filters and all these people that have these absolutely immaculate lives with immaculate bodies and immaculate hair and immaculate, 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 rather than being normal. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the issue that when I'm talking about positive toxic toxicity, this is what I'm talking about. These deceits that we're telling ourselves, of course, this is seeping into our relationships. Mm -hmm. and the this lack of learning from a long, young age that actually pain doesn't kill you mm. it makes you stronger mm -hmm. 
because we have this in and I know where you're coming from you said about your daughter and you, you you're dreading the day she has her first heartbreak yeah and, and, and as any parent I was kind of like oh I was you know waiting for my daughter's first as well and I was just but it's that first cut that teaches you mm -hmm. and it's the people that are there for you that you allow to be there for you that will teach you moving forward because you will build a program and mm -hmm. then that program will play out all the way through your life until you change it mm -hmm. so whether that first cut was a, a positive experience or even though it's painful was was it did you learn for it were you given the space to do the introspection did you understand why that relationship broke up and and did you just allow it to go bring it to completion understand that it it, it reached its lifespan and then you let it go you cut those cords of attachment Mm -hmm. and and you just let it go with love or are you sat there trying to hold it onto it you know the the vespers because that a lot of the time when we're angry when we play out a story they did this they did that they did this they did that this is awful da, 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 da. when we're doing that it's because we've not let go yeah absolutely and if we've not let go we can't move forward and if, if we do move forward, then we're just going to repeat it because it's going to be a cycle. It's, and you, I think people have forgotten that also, like you said, with the cycle, that we have to go through those pains yeah. because that's what's going to help us grow. Yeah. And instead of feeling like you lost someone or understand that relationships end, friendships and relationships and and instead of trying to hold something or someone an idea and most of the time I think it's an idea that we're trying to hold on to mm -hmm. you know the belief that I had hope that we were going to be this I because you don't hear like I want you as a person we was like I you know I I thought we were going to be together forever so there's your idea you thought that this was going to be forever you've invested so much money I've you know we we had 15 20 years together and then he just leaves and I you know we had a family I thought we were going to grow older so you are sold on an idea and a belief and when that didn't go through that's where you're crushed because you didn't you're not if you look at the person we can let go of people but we can't let go of the experiences we cannot let go of the memories we cannot let go of all that and then we get stuck in that mm -hmm. of all the good things and then we can move forward, like you said. But if we take it in a sense of, you know, this this relationship ran its course mm -hmm. and it taught me so much and I'm going to miss this person terribly. Yeah. But I can't wait to see what lies ahead. I can't wait to see what happens. And I know that's easier said than done when you're in pain. But if you fall victim to your pain, mm -hmm. it will take over you. Yeah. And it's going to dominate everything. You're not going to think clearly. You're not going to even be able to move at some point. You're going to be paralyzed from it. So face it and face the fact that, yes, it is over and it's time to move forward. Once you understand what happened of relationships end. And if you've gone 15 years in a relationship, in a marriage or 20, you've known that in the past, you've also had other breakups and mm -hmm. they turned out quite a well, mm -hmm. quite right. You can't say like, I've lost all this. No, you've gained, hopefully, m most of the time you have children. So you have beautiful children with that person. You have beautiful memories. Hold on to those because that's still the person. But do you really want to be with someone who is not at the same level energetically anymore? Yeah. Do you have unplugged? And I think that's what happens is we, we connect to ourselves to someone and believe that that's our whole. But when, mm -hmm. And so when we're disconnected from them, we, we feel lost. We feel like uh, powerless. There's nothing we can do. So we want to have that back. And we need to 
accept the fact that we shouldn't have done that to begin with. Should, we shouldn't plug ourselves and connect ourselves to someone so deeply that when they leave, we feel powerless. Mm-hmm. But, we, but if we find out who we are and grow, and when that person decides to leave, and we are whole, we don't need them. I mean, we would love to be with them, but we don't need them. And we thank them, forgive them, forgive ourselves. If we, Because it always takes two to tango on when it's a relationship's over. And if we can learn from our mistakes and move forward, then we're ready for the next relationship. Yeah. And I think closing this up, you really hit it on the head there, is that the this changing and and this is what we need to be because the relationship change the the relationship ends because one or the other is changed and you've grown apart and usually what's happened is you've changed because life isn't functioning for you because you plugged yourself into somebody else Mm -hmm. you sacrificed yourself for somebody else or that's how it feels to you whether you actually did it or not is another matter but that's how it feels to you so it would take that that, that's real and then because you've done that which wasn't asked for but it was was it received well absolutely but was it asked for and this is a difference these these are key elements as well you've sacrificed yourself and then you think oh hang on I'm not getting anything back so you start pulling back you start changing but they don't want to change. They're quite happy with those dynamics. Yeah, because they're getting and everything. <laughs> they're getting everything. But you can't blame them because, and 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 I think this is the key. It's just learning. Okay, you decided life wasn't functioning for you, and making that decision. My life's not functioning for me. I need to make changes. Also, needs to be equated in there. This relationship may not survive the changes I'm making, but I need to make them anyway. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's a really good point. Because I I don't think none of us ever do that. Like, okay, the changes that I'm going to make in my life, you're hoping that they come with. You're hoping that they, they come through. And I know that when we are start growing and the other person doesn't start growing, it feels like a disconnection, like we're just falling apart. You know, we're moving in different directions and it's almost like they're angry at that person not growing, but that's not your, that's, you can't control that. You can, mm-hmm. you, you have to let it go. It's if you decide to make a change for yourself and sometimes we're not even aware we make those changes, but we do because we're like, we're more invested in the children. We're more invested in, you know, the house. We're more invested in our careers. We're more invested in ourselves and our families. And we start growing apart and expect that other person to come running and join you. It's 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 crazy almost. Like, okay, you can't expect that. There. But if you, like you said, you're making those changes and those, those uh, you're growing you also need to take in the equation that that person might not follow, mm-hmm. that they might not be there, mm-hmm. that they're not going to grow with you. Or if they do, they're not going to grow in the same direction that you're going. That needs to be also added to that equation. Yeah. And that's a great point because I don't think that none of us ever thinks about things like that, that when I'm growing, if I decide to, you know, I'm growing, I'm going to start a new career and this career could possibly enhance my marriage or my relationship or it can break it mm-hmm. and am I okay with that outcome that needs to be considered if if I'm going to even stop like uh, if I'm going to get healthy and my partner is, is still you know going to fast food joints you know and I want him to join or I want her to join will that relationship make it you can't just think like I'm going to start eating healthy. So you have to still eat healthy. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Your journey is yours mm-hmm. and that's theirs. And if they happen to go together, like, you know, if, if I always say like I'm growing and I hope that my growth, you're still a part of it in the future. But if not, that's okay. 
because then I know that you had other plans or there's another plan for you. And I'm okay with that. But if I, I would love it for it to be, but if it doesn't work, I'm also okay with that because that just means there's somebody else out there that, or might not be someone else, but that's the path that I'm going. And that's something that I need to be okay with. So um, that's uh, when I'm thinking about my daughter, that's kind of what, what I've told her before. It's like, you know, it's, you just never know who you're going to end up with. So don't attach yourself too much to someone. Enjoy the time, enjoy the ride. And when that ride comes to an end, thank it and yes. move forward. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a beautiful place to end this. So that's bye-bye from me. And me. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and comment. We'd love to hear from you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and please leave a review as it helps us grow and bridge the gap between the sexes. If you have any topics you would like us to cover, shoot us an email. Until next time, go out and practice putting all your cards on the table with no judgment, expectations, and fear.